Good morning, Malibu, and happy early, early, early Thanksgiving. I'm Shayla Jordan. And I'm Alex Fisher. Grab a cup of coffee and don't move. Good morning, Malibu starts right now. Good morning and happy Friday to you all. Happy Ooh, Friday. Ooh, it is finally the end of the week. Made it through a week. I know yep. for a lot of us it's been the last week before we have that Thanksgiving break and there's been so much to do, so many papers and presentations, if, but we made it. If we can get through today, we have just a two-day week. Some people have a three-day week next mm -hmm. week and then we're off for Thanksgiving, so that's always Lots nice. Of turkey, mashed potatoes. What's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Oh man, I really like a turkey with gravy with mashed potatoes and gravy. I mean, I get more stuff, winner. but I, I I love that. But My favorite is the sweet potatoes. Oh, see, I'm not a sweet potato fan. I am such a sweet potato fan, and it's the perfect excuse yeah. to like go all out. But anyway, well, thanks again not for joining. Thanks anything. again for joining us. Thanksgiving is soon, so I'm sure everyone's excited like we are. Uh, but let's go back to the or go to these stories. An orphan boy without his right hand fits right into his new home. And he has something in common with his grandpa. This is how Kirill and his grandpa, Chris Facey, say hello. Uh, Chris's son and his wife wanted to adopt from Kazakhstan, and when they received a photo of a boy missing his arm, they knew he would be their son. So Kirill was passed up for adoption six times, but when he flew home to meet his new family, that's when he saw his grandpa, which was the first person Kirill has seen with a missing arm. So as you can see, he's just got a big smile, and I'm sure grandpa loves his new grandson i mean i just think that's a it's so absolutely sweet adorable. and how cool that he has you know that that something in common that yeah. bonding moment with his grandfather that's so unique well and they and, and so they say that um they bump each other now so they have like a little secret handshake oh which is a which, yeah. which is a bump and so that's how they say hello so i think that's really cute it's but. really cute and it's such a precious and encouraging story for this yes, little boy it to is. see him find a home where he's loved and cherished i i just love seeing i think it's like absolutely that. adorable yeah, yeah. Well, from one precious story uh, to the next, here is a really unique story of nothing other than young love. Take a look. Okay, that hurts. Really, that really hurts. <laughs> so eight-year-old David has never known a life without cancer, but he's also found something to help him face these trials, and that's love. David has leukemia, and he's been living on and off with cancer since he was two. But David met Ayla his first day of second grade, and they've been inseparable ever since. Now, you might be thinking these two are a little young for love, but their parents think otherwise. Even when David had to stop going to school, he found a way to see Ayla, um, and they've been going on dates. They spend all of their time together, and I think it's so sweet because when you see these interviews together, um, they just, they're inseparable, and the parents even said that, you know, he would walk on water with her, and it's so, you know, unique to see and that. And why break that up? Age. Oh yeah. yeah, and why break that up? I mean, that's that's cute. I mean, everyone's. I mean, everyone has that friend in school and whatnot. But I mean, here you can see that they are totally inseparable. So. Yeah, and it's seven to have that understanding and oh, to have yeah, that commitment absolutely. to a person is is really precious. Uh, that is precious. Okay, well, the holiday season is coming soon, and so donating toys during the holiday is really nothing new. But buying a toy store for kids, well. That's unusual. Carol Schumann went to a toy store to buy a toy and, and saw that the store was for rent. So instead of buying a toy, she actually purchased the whole entire store. She donated the thousands of toys and stuffed animals to the local homeless shelter just in time for the holidays, which means thousands of homeless kids will have at least one present to open on Christmas Day. So definitely a story that puts a smile on your face. I know that there's going to be so many kids, thousands of kids who are going to open up those presents and have a smile I on their face. I applaud her. Talk about years. going, you know, above and beyond and really going oh, extra. Yeah. But I have to say on a side note, like, she's like living the dream. She bought a toy store. Toy store. Like, How cool is that? I put that on my resume. Oh, yeah. and, I bought a toy store? You know, I, mean, I can just imagine what her husband might say. So what'd you do today? Oh, I bought a toy store. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, yeah. so casual. There must but... <laughs> have been some mixed reviews there, but, you know, understanding the whole story is but, uh, so cool. Yeah, she saw that it was for rent. She called the owner and, and negotiated a, a fair price, and the owner said, all right, it's yours. And so she took all the toys and... And gave them away. Yeah, so I think really understanding the spirit of Christmas. Spirit, You've got yes, a Santa's absolutely. helper right there. Absolutely. 
All right, well, <laughs> switching gears a bit, uh, we all know that Facebook can be very helpful at times. Well, now they're helping to make breakups a little easier. That's right. Now, you may feel like you never want to see your ex again, especially on social media, and now you can do just that. Uh, the app allows users to see less of a person if they wish, and it also limits which posts and photos that person can view of you. You can also go back and edit old posts and even untag them without them knowing. So talk about erasing the past. Facebook basically made it an option for you to remove any photos, uh, tags, edits. You have you have all the power. You can just kind of delete that person I, from your Facebook life. I, I feel like because of social media and it, you know it's so easy to see what other people are doing. Uh, nowadays that mm -hmm. this has been kind of a problem for a lot of people is I mean it breakups has. are hard but then when you start to see their life kind of go on it's kind of yeah. you know, difficult. It's painful as it is and to constantly see them on your social media page you know can be really challenging yes. especially when you have the Facebook status in oh, a relationship yeah. not in a relationship so I, I see where they're coming from and I think it's a good step I think it's gonna help a lot of people but also to, to totally erase a whole person from your social media is I mean, very interesting. You got to do what you got to do. It's so funny <laughs> though because the other day I do. saw a uh, I saw someone talking about uh, an app that they had just downloaded and it will play Nickelback when you dial your ex. So there you go. So it's kind of like a just just a reminder. Don't don't do that. Do you really want to go through with that? So anyway, so it's funny to see all these can, things coming you out. You can now. play Nickelback if you accidentally dial your ex, and you can erase them from your social media. So see, life it's a is win -win. getting easier, everyone. Your breakups just got easier. <laughs> well, it's been warm the past couple days, but uh, Thanksgiving is around the corner, and so is it going to feel a little bit like fall, or is it going to feel more like summer? Logan, what can you tell us? Gosh, Alex, you know, that weather has just been so confusing lately with, you know, it being so cold in the morning and so hot in the afternoon, but I think we can expect a uh, nice warm Malibu Thanksgiving. Now let's take a look at the current temps here in Malibu. It is currently 69 degrees, a nice sunny 69 with 25% humidity and 25 mile an hour wind. And if you're thinking about catching some waves this morning, you might want to reconsider. Uh, conditions are extremely poor with one to two foot swells and uh, the high tide tonight coming in at around 4 19 p.m. Now let's take a look at the regional temps. It is currently 62 degrees in Calabasas, uh, 62 degrees in Thousand Oaks, 56 degrees in Santa Monica. And now moving on to the three-day forecast, we have a red flag fire warning that has been issued for the Los Angeles County including Santa Monica and Malibu from this evening through Sunday for wind and low humidity. 20 to 30 mile per hour northeast winds and relative humidity make conditions favorable for extreme fire behavior. Well, we are enjoying a beautiful Malibu, no Malibu November while the rest of the country is all bundled up indoors. So now let's take a look at the weather conditions for this weekend. Today's high is 80 degrees and the low is 60. Saturday we have a high of 81 with a low of 58 and astounding winds at 20 to 30 miles per hour. And Sunday we have a beautiful high of 79 and a low of 56. We should uh, really be taking advantage of this weather, guys. It is really a nice weekend, uh, and the rest of the country is experiencing a lot of cold temperatures. Back to you guys. I mean, I'm not going to complain that. I mean, I like a little, I like to wear sweaters. I like to wear sweatshirts and bundle up, but when it is brutally cold, I yeah. really do that. And it's been cooling down a little bit, so I can handle this. We've got a warm this. weekend, Absolutely. and then cooling again before Thanksgiving. Just so a variety of options. Yeah. You know? At least I'm not seeing any 90s. 90s. I don't want to see 90s, and so we don't have any 90s, so not that's good. Not Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, don't go anywhere. When we return, Alexis will be bringing us the latest news. And if you're still in bed, get up. It's time to jump. We've got Amanda Stevenson here, and we'll be jump roping with her. Stay tuned. 18 people have been announced dead in a hostage that happened in the capital of Mali. <laughs> At 7 a.m. local time, two gunmen went to Radisson Blue and took dozens of people as hostage. The Radisson says that as many as 170 people were still in the hotel at the start of the hostage situation. The country's state broadcaster announced that all hostages have been freed. The UN says that it was two Malians and one French national who were the first three victims. No group has claimed responsibility for the tragic incident. Now, it has been a week exactly since the attacks in Paris, and the death toll has risen to 130. Prime Minister Manuel Vall announced in a speech to the Senate that he plans on extending France's state of emergency for another three months. The Senate will be voting on whether or not to approve that this afternoon. French authorities say 
police have conducted a total of 793 raids since last week's attacks. We will continue to keep those affected by the attacks in our thoughts and prayers. Now, this may surprise you, but the flow of immigration from Mexico to the U.S. is reversing. According to a report from the Pew Research Center, more Mexicans are returning to Mexico than coming into America. The study shows that between 2009 and 2014, about 1 million Mexican families have left to Mexico, while only 870,000 families have come into the U.S. Researchers say this is likely because of stricter immigration laws, an increase in deportation, and family ties. However, many of the families returned of their own accord. Now we have Stacia here with sports. The NorCal versus SoCal rivalry took to the court yesterday in a close battle between the LA Clippers and Golden State Warriors. In the end, the defending champions triumphed 124 to 117 over the Clippers, but the seven point win is testament to the close battle between the two heavyweight teams. The Clippers led out the gate 41 to 25 at the top of the second quarter, thanks to Paul and Griffin's 30 point combined performance. In addition, teammate DeAndre Jordan's put back dunk in the first quarter put the Warriors at an 18 point deficit, the biggest deficit yet in their undefeated season. With the pressure on, Steph Curry scored 40 points and led the Warriors home with the win. Swim and dive set the pace in the pool after day one at the A3 Performance Invitational. Carolyn Boone and Julia Sneedon qualified for finals in the 500 free and 200 individual medley, respectively. Six other waves posted season bests and career records in the water. The competition will only heat up as the 12-team Invitational continues today and culminates with finals this Saturday. If you want to catch the waves in action at home, today is your best bet. Start your Friday off right with a 10 a.m. matchup between our men's water polo and Long Beach State. If the court is where you cheer best, women's basketball returns to the field house after a week of play on the East Coast. The waves will take on Cal State Fullerton Titans at 7 p.m. tonight. And that's your roundup for sports this weekend. All right, thanks, Stacia. All right, we'll refill your coffee cup. We have the latest in celebrity gossip up next. And when we get back, Alex and I are going to see if we have what it takes to make the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Stay tuned. <laughs> From Adele to Kobe Bryant to Jay law we've got all sorts of entertainment news for you all today. Adele's new album, 25 Hit Stories Today. And along with the long-awaited album, Adele drops some of the news on fans this morning. Following in T. Swift's footsteps, Adele steps away from streaming sites on the basis of insufficient compensation. So, if you were hoping to catch a song off this new album on Apple Music or Pandora, it looks like you're out of luck. Let's just be honest. In today's generation, I'm going to give it a good maybe five hours, maybe ten before it's online for free. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's true. It's going to be on YouTube and stuff. That's what I was thinking, but I mean... I can understand, you know, if someone works hard on an album, they might not want it to be out there for free, so, you know. That's right, Adele. We'll Get them coins. Mm -hmm. She wants them coins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could it be the end for Kobe Bryant? The soon-to-be Hall of Famer hasn't publicly come out and said it's his last season, but he's been dropping plenty of clues that have many fans wondering. Fans have already noticed Bryant's bodies breaking down this early in the season and are skeptical that he'd be able to play next season, which Kobe himself admitted on an interview this, this morning with Sirius XM. If something changes, I'll come back and play next season, Bryant said. According to the D New York Daily News, if something doesn't change, this is it for me. Is this the end for Kobe Bryant? Um, I pray to God not. Like, okay, you know I'm an L.A. native, so I grew up with the Lakers, so... Mm -hmm. It'll definitely be a sad thing for my city, you know, to see Kobe go, but he's given us a lot, so, you know. Yeah, he's been around since I was a baby. It'll be really weird, but Kobe, we all got to go sometime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in other news, move over, Queen Bee, because Blue Ivy is ready to take the throne. The three-year-old will be putting her singing skills to the test with her debut on Coldplay's seventh studio album. The band's lead singer Chris Martin says Beyonce will make an appearance on the song Hymn for the Weekend and Blue Ivy has vocals throughout A Head Full of Dreams. 
I'm personally excited for Blue Ivy. You know, I support Beyonce. She making Blue Ivy work while she's young. Get the coins now so you can play later. Right, like, and you are, we already heard Blue on Beyonce's album like a little bit, and it was super cute, so I know this one will be cute too, and I'm obviously Team Beyonce, so. You know, shout out to the Carter family. Yeah, I'm just interested to see what her voice sounds like since she's three. Is she going to be blowing or is she going to be humming? Um, like, I'm going to guess this is going to be like restricted to some la la <laughs> Hopefully. Well, three huge movies hit theaters this week. The last of the hum Hunger Games saga are Julia Roberts' crime and a raunchy Christmas comedy. Mockingjay Part 2 is the final installment in the Hunger Games series. Katniss Everdeen, the reluctant leader of the rebellion, takes the fight to the Capitol and the evil president Snow. Julia Roberts plays an FBI agent whose daughter is murdered in the secret in their eyes. The killer disappears after being let go and the long hunt for him begins. Years later, a fellow agent finds him and the mother goes out for revenge. The secret in, the secret in their eyes is rated PG-13. And the night before, a group of friends in an annual Christmas Eve tradition. This year, instead of just hanging out, they hit the town in New York hunting for the best Christmas parties and getting into all kinds of trouble. The night before is rated R. These look like some pretty interesting movies. I know a lot of my friends are heading out to see that last Hunger Games. I don't know, I know. about you. I know. I'm definitely going to see it. You know, I have to see the last one. Yeah. The, la the last one was really good. But, yeah, that's a wrap for all your celeb gossip this week. Back to you, Shayla and Alex. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. I am so excited for The Last Mockingjay. Oh, yeah. Or it is. Last Hunger Games. I got to say, we've got some really good so movies good. coming out this holiday season. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of people were talking about... Uh, Mockingjay Part 2, and then of course... It's going to um, be terrific. And we're have less you than seen a month away from Star Wars. We are. Star Wars is right around the corner, and you know, have you seen the uh, all the other Hunger Games? Is this... Oh yeah, yeah. of course, Same. of course. And, so you know, this is the, the last one. I'm excited, and this started when we were starting here at Pepperdine, oh, yeah. so I feel like it's it's the way to finish it out. It's up, wrapping up. It's all Anyways. coming together. But, <laughs> well, um, don't go anywhere. When we get back, we have an interview with competitive jump roper Amanda Stevenson. It's going to be good. Yeah. Welcome back to Good Morning Malibu. We are here with none other than the incredible Amanda Stevenson. You're like a celebrity on campus now. Really are. We, I'm Apparently, so excited. Yeah. So you're not only a competitive jump roper, you're going to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade next week. I'm going to be looking for you. I oh, feel like we all saying, will. We all will. Where's Waldo? <laughs> I'm like, there she is. Um, but tell us, like, what got you initially started in competitive jump roping? I think this is such a cool story. It is. Um, well, I was when I was in middle school, I did like normal sports, like volleyball and soccer. And then I got injured, so I had to just stop doing all sports. So once I got really out of shape, I was looking for something to get back into shape. So. I read that jump rope was like a really efficient form of cardio, so I bought a jump rope and just started jumping in my driveway. And once I got kind of tired of just jumping up and down, I saw that there was a class being offered in my town that was taught by the coach of the team in my town. So um, I signed up for that and I took that in like the second class, the coach asked me if I wanted to join the team. I didn't really know what that meant at the time, but I just kind of did it and I, You can see some you know, pictures right here back. of your team and, and oh, of course some of your yeah. workout yeah. routines yeah. there. So that will be what I do in the Macy's Parade. There will be, think of that times 100. There will be 100 people doing that for three miles um, down oh, the streets of goodness. New York. That and is unbelievable. Yeah. So how long have you been jump roping? Um, this is like year nine ish okay so yeah. you you have some experience under your belt i think I it's think safe so, to say yeah <laughs> so you know makes you think saving day parade it's a big parade mm -hmm. i mean it is safe to say that the best of the best across the nation and even the world come to this parade to yeah. uh, show off their skills and stuff so how do you prep for such a big parade well we had to apply to be in and there's a team organizing it they're from ohio mm -hmm. um they organized it and invited pretty much anybody that wanted to apply to apply and there was some criteria you had to meet and then you applied and we found out in August that we got in. So I pretty much just started training in August. Um, I went to the track the day I moved back into campus, did three laps. I was dying. I thought I thought I was like going to, I was so tired. And I was like, this is gonna be really hard. But every week I just would add a lap. So I'm up to 10 now. Oh my oh, goodness. goodness. And it's so. going to be cold too. Does that mean something different for you guys? So, I mean, for me, it's been, I'm looking forward to it being cold because it's been, you know, kind of hot here lately yes. and windy and dry. <laughs> yep. So that makes it harder because 
when you're trying to like work out, you get like dust in your mouth and like your throat gets really dry. So I have to drink a lot of water and we don't get a lot of water breaks during the parade. So um, yeah, I, I think the cold weather will be nice. We have like a like gloves and a headband and under armor in case it's like super cold, but just in case it's right now, it's supposed to be like in the like high fifties, which means we might have there to, go. we so might bad. have to wear that's shorts. Nice. That's not bad. Well, that's true. Cause, Cause after an hour of jumping, jumping. you're like Good really night. hot. Okay. So, so when do you take off? When do you leave? I leave tonight. You leave tonight. Yeah. Ooh, right. So all right, and how can we find you? Yes. I want to, I want to see you. <laughs> well, it will be, it won't be hard to miss us. Cause there'll, nice. you know, it'll be like a hundred people. Uh -huh. Um, I think that they're going to announce like the day before, kind of like the projected time that will be okay. shown because go. they sh typically show us like in the parade jumping and then we have a performance at the end in Herald Square in front of Macy's Yay. that okay. is like televised for NBC. So they'll tell us that. I'm excited All right. So we'll I'll make sure to, in. you know, put well, it on Facebook. So look out for Amanda Stevenson <laughs> on Thanksgiving morning on NBC, NBC, NBC on right? NBC, so you can't miss her. She'll be there <laughs> jump roping. Uh, but we are not done yet. We're actually going to go outside and, and Alex and I are going to try our hand try, at this. Try. Hopefully, uh, great. maybe we'll make the cut for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. You I never know. I Stay tuned. <laughs> We are here back with Amanda Stevenson, who is going to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on Thursday, on Thanksgiving Day, and we couldn't leave without her showing us how to jump rope. And we've been practicing I think you're ready. all morning yeah, long. I think it's been great. We're starting to. Yeah, so so show right. us, what are we going to do here? We're going right. to... So you're gonna jump. You're gonna jump into some double dutch right ropes. Shayla's we'll been practicing her turning. She's a pretty good turner. So I'm, thank you. I'm gonna I'm attempt this here. Turner, if I do turn so so a little see. slower, a little slower. All right. All right. All right. Ready, set, go. Just jump really big. Oh, oh try okay. one more time. I got time. one. one I got time. one. Okay, let's do this again. I think you got two. At least I got. I think you can get like five. 